Northwest later, 3 or 4. Fog patches later, moderate or good, occasionally very poor later. Lockfall to Collingford Lock. Southerly or southeasterly, 3 to 5, veering northerly or northwesterly, 2 to 4 later. Showers, fog patches for a time in east, moderate or good, occasionally very poor for a time in east. Mull of Galloway to Mull of Kintyre, including the Firth of Clyde and the North Channel. Southerly or southeasterly, 3 to 5, veering westerly or northwesterly, 2 or 3. Mainly fair than showers with fog patches developing for a time. If you're anywhere near Aberdeen, by near I mean within 100 miles, between April and July, come here. It's a big seabird colony. Scotland has some of the best seabird colonies in the world. It's one of the things that we have that's really special. There's 130,000 seabirds breed here. And I'm here for some photography, but this isn't um, the key part of the video. Now I'm quite an awkward person, so when I see a great photo, part of me thinks well done and part of me thinks, oh well, no point in taking that image. And if I'm honest, I'll get some photos here, but nothing that I'm really going to be excited about. <laughs> I might be wrong, I'd like to be, because generally there's lots of people here with cameras. And if you look online, you look at social media and the like, a lot of the images that you can get here have been taken and I tend to be one of these people that basically I've got a store of amazing photos but they're up here and it's how to get them from up here onto one of these. Now I had an opportunity recently, you see trying to get photos of swimming seabirds is quite easy. But if you look at pictures of like ducks and other sort of water birds that you get in freshwater, you'll see a lot of the images are taken very low down, so they'll be sort of eye level with the bird. Now that's not too difficult on a lake. You can go for a floating hide, or you can even go for um, just lying on a beach, so you're at the water's level. In the sea, it's a completely different situation because you know, floating hide at sea is fairly brave. Um, but I spotted an opportunity. You see, there's a, a boat in Stonehaven, a really beautiful luxury boat, that has this panel on the back, a swim platform. So it's for getting on and off the boat. Now, I looked at this with envy, because if you imagine lying on that platform, you're only just above the waves. So I set out to sort of get in touch with the people. I've ended up 
um, organising a series of workshops with them. So I'm going out there and helping people get wonderful images, helping them get low down images, but also getting out there myself to get these sort of wave height photos. And we'll see how we get on. So I'm going to have a look at the file first, and then later on in the film, I'll be going out on the, the Mrs. B and um, seeing how I do. Anyway, I'm going to carry on with my walk. Falshu is a truly superb place for wildlife photography. You can spend time photographing all the common members of the Orc family, so guillemots, razorbills, and the occasional puppin. Black guillemots are sometimes seen, but they are quite rare. In the end, I took 1,208 images on this visit. Many of them were of the seabirds in amongst the, the beautiful pink thrift at the top of the cliffs. These were always pleasing and beautiful shots. However, most of the images were taken of the seabirds in flight. They fly along at eye level or just below regularly and make a really good subject. However, it didn't always work out as well as I'd hoped. In fact, what I think were probably the best shots of the night didn't go right at all. So of the four photos, the first two weren't quite sharp enough. The third one was perfectly sharp, but I'd cut the wing off. And in the fourth one, the bird blinked which is slightly annoying. I also photographed razor bills before my attention went on to kitty wakes. Kitty wakes provide the soundtrack for Fowl Shoe. They're a wonderful bird and they really are sky dancers. You see them just hovering and playing, playing on the wind. But while I was there, I kept being drawn down. You see, although the images from the top of the cliffs were great, the numbers of people there with big cameras taking very similar shots to me is quite large and I, I do like to get something different. So my eyes kept being drawn down from the top of the cliff, down to the sea below. And the vast, vast numbers of birds that were milling around waiting to come to the cliffs. And the realisation that there really were some superb photographic opportunities, but in order to make them, I would have to get considerably lower than I was. And so, on an early morning in late May, myself and four other photographers set off on the luxurious Mrs. B. The Mrs. B was launched in Finland only two years ago, and she's an excellent, fast and stable craft. We're headed past Donata Castle, an excellent photographic site in its own right, on to Balshu with a range of wonderful wildlife. While the main target for the trip was birds, the first photographic opportunity came with seals. Quite a few seals came and explored the boat, coming really quite close to check us out. However, it wasn't the seals on the water that interested me most, it was the ones on the rocks. These didn't seem bothered by us at all. In fact, they kept staring past the boat into the distance. I wonder what they were looking at. I particularly liked this little chap and the relationship between him and the orc that he was obviously checking out. But soon we reached the main seabird cliffs. I took the opportunity to try and improve on the flight shots I'd taken a few nights before. See, the problem with this sort of shot is the background is dull. A clean sky is okay, but 
if you can start getting the cliffs behind, you start getting far more texture and far more interest. I was really pleased with some of the pictures that came out, particularly when you got groups of birds and you could target a particular individual as they were flying in formation. This was very pleasing, but it was not the main aim of the trip. The main aim was the low level shots of birds swimming on the sea. And this was to prove successful, if not, shall we say, a little bit uncomfortable for the photographer, at least on the first attempt. Okay, so we're coming up towards Falshu now. The birds are behaving beautifully. We're surrounded by all manner of orcs and a few seals. But I've been trying to do something a bit mad. So the boat has this, which is a swimming deck. I've been trying to lie down on there to get low angle photos. And <laughs> it's not pleasant. It really isn't, but. Show you behind, we've got Killimots and Ponzi. So the first attempt felt a little bit like this. You see, it was done while the boat was still travelling. And I was next to the exhaust, the engine rumbling, and having just had a fairly large breakfast. However, we quickly learned, and the next attempt was done with the engine turned off with the boat just drifting. This was much more pleasant. The reason for doing this trip was because the standard view of a, an orc is like this. You're looking down on the bird, which means two things. One, it looks just normal. It, you've seen the photo so many times before. Also, you get those horrible reflections. Now, if you can get low enough, those reflections, instead of being of the sky, become of the background. In this case, the cliff in shadow. So this meant that an image was transformed from this to this. These images were taken looking through the eyepiece of the Canon R6. However, you could get even lower by using the flip out screen and resting the camera on the deck effectively. This was not easy at all because the boat was moving and I don't believe this would have been possible with a, a traditional DSLR. I certainly couldn't have done it. So my basic technique was to point the, the camera in the general direction of the bird, doing my best to keep on to it. However, I generally let the eye focus actually get the bird sharp. This meant that I could concentrate on getting the exposure perfect using manual and looking at the histogram. I was very pleased with these results. These are low key images where the, the background is dark and the, the subject stands out really well. But these were far from the last photographic opportunities of the trip. Trying to keep them updated as I do count seals as soon as possible.
make a distinctive Eventually we found a really calm sheltered spot and was able to turn off the engines and just let the boat drift. The other photographers in the group took their turn to get the low angle shots and when it was my turn I decided to try something a bit different. Having concentrated on the low key images before I decided to face straight into the sun and attempt some very high key images where everything but the subject ends up ends up white. Firstly I wanted to try and show the vast number of birds there and the amount of life that was going on. So I took a, a few wider longer distance shots. I think you'll agree this is an amazing place and just that volume of life. A big surprise came when a flock of geese flew past. Where they were going in late May, I have no idea. Eventually, a razor bill decided that it wanted some attention, so I started focusing on the birds closer to the boat, including this spectacled guillemot. Very pleased with this picture. But I think this is one of the best pictures of the day. It was proving to be an excellent trip. So we're just under the cliffs at Hallsview, absolutely surrounded by birds, slightly soaked because I've been lying down there, which gives really, really great low angle photography, um, but you do get wet from time to time. We're surrounded by huge numbers of hawks, and the sound of wonderful kitty wakes, that is an amazing sound. So this is about 10 miles south of Stonehaven and there's just birds everywhere. This is just about as good as just about as good as it gets. Soon we were heading south towards the hamlet of Catiline. This is a, an amazing piece of coastline with some great features. Although the captain was telling us that the seals have been behaving rather skittishly in this area. In fact, almost seeming to be traumatized since the passing through of the orcas that are in my recent video. We had Great fun seeing lots of interesting sights, including including these. I don't know what they are, but I don't think anybody was really interested. However, we had one last interesting photographic surprise. We took the boat further offshore looking for dolphins, stopping regularly to scan. However, going at 30 knots, I don't think it was that fast, going at 25 knots, turned out to be really good for bird photography because the birds were flying along at roughly the same speed that we were travelling, allowing us to get some really quite interesting images of large groups of birds in flight.
the first trip, which I thought mm -hmm. went really well. That's it. Correct. Fantastic. Waffle night going on at the moment. Stonehaven's as busy as always. Paddle boarders, boat trips, fishing boats, people fishing from the pier. That's a really nice way to spend the Sunday morning. So I think we've got some space to on some of the trips later on. If you're interested in joining us, please let us know. Thank you for watching. It's fair to say the trip had massively exceeded expectations thanks to perfect weather, a wonderful vessel and a really excellent crew. However, one of the species was expecting to see notable by its absence. That is until the second workshop. So here's a little bit of bonus footage of a species that I'm sure will be on this channel again or one that I love to see. So lastly please remember to like and subscribe.